Hi everyone, this is uh, Kai Savas here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe out there. We know the channel has been quiet recently, so thank you for your patience as we all adjust to the new normals uh, being presented to us in our daily lives. Uh, today I have the great pleasure of chatting with Queenie Lee, who will be giving us a unique and different perspective of the music industry. Uh, while we talk to a lot of composers and dissect their work, we all know it takes a team effort to accomplish some of these incredible scores. And uh, Queenie has worked with composer Lauren Bal for quite a few years now and has acted as a musical production coordinator for him, uh, wearing many hats behind the scenes, and today will give us a unique perspective on her role on some of uh, your favorite scores that come from Mr. Balf. Uh, Queenie, it's so nice to chat with you. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for doing this. Hi, Kaya. <laughs> of course. It's so great to chat with you. Um, so uh, let's just start, you know, I want to start kind of knowing about you a little bit. Talk about... Uh, Kind of what was the first moment you knew you wanted to kind of get involved in the music industry and how did you get from where you started to where you are today? Um, so I did um, I did music in in, in, uh, in college and I, um, I also went to um, grad school for music as well for audio engineering. So I, I, I always knew I wanted to do something um, in music, but I just don't know in what category and in where. Um, I actually um, don't know about the studio till, um, till I thought I need to start looking for an internship right after college. So, um, and I was I was very lucky to be able to um, do the internship with Remote Control, and then um, from there I just stayed, became a runner, and then I got a assistant position there. So, uh, yeah, talk us through that process. I mean, a lot of people probably would, you know. <laughs> sell their soul to work you know with composers at remote control i mean was, was it as simple as just uh, uh did you just apply to a random thing online did you know it was for remote when you applied to it i actually didn't do any um application so there was like a a, a spring semester um with my school at syracuse and the whole class came down to la for like a industry um and in, yeah industry week just to meet with professionals and um, my professor at the time had a friend who was in architecture and he knows someone who worked at a studio. So he connected me with this person and, um, and he, yeah. And he said that this studio is constantly looking for um, interns and, um, and he's actually uh, Matt Magison, um, who is another composer on campus. So I, I looked up the, yeah, the name of the studio and I was, shocked and surprised um so i applied and then i uh, i talked to chris strong through skype um and yeah he was the studio uh, operation manager at the time and and um yeah and then i i got a offer and then flew out to la the day after i graduate um yeah it, wow. it was a yeah it was a <laughs> nice connection which i didn't know <laughs> about so yes yeah, so it's it's good to have a job right the day after graduation <laughs> well it's an internship but it's internship right <laughs> um so talk about it so you you're working remote control what's that process like and how did you eventually meet lauren and how did that connection kind of happen and we've been with him for a better part of a decade now <laughs> well um I, yeah i i've been with lauren for four years now um, and yeah, I, I started as an intern and then I, um, interned for, um, Henry, Henry Jackman's team as well for a while. Um, and then I became a studio runner. Um, and, um, yeah, Lon, Lon, Lon had a assistant leaving at the time. So they were, um, yeah, they were looking for assistant and, and I, I, yeah, I was happened to be there and then, um, yeah. And I was suggested to him and then I met him. Um, at his studio. Right, nice. So, of course, for anyone who's listening, if you don't know Lauren, I don't know if you live under a rock or anything, but Lauren, you know, he's a friend, he's an amazing composer, absolute delight of a human being, and he scored films like, you know, Mission Impossible, Fallout, Bad Boys for Life, His Dark Materials, Six Underground, uh, the TV series Genius, Pacific Rim Uprising, Lego Batman, I mean, many, many more. I could go on and on. Um, so, when you're working with a composer, Talk us through that process because you're, I guess your, your title technically would be music production coordinator, but you've also been kind of an assistant to Lauren and everything. But uh, what is, I guess, I know it's a hard question because 
I know I'm, my title is production systems coordinator at my job. And I, if you ask me, what do I do for a day to day? I could go on, you know, for hours, but, uh, so what technically, if you could boil it down, what is your job and, and kind of what does your day to day look like? Well, it's hard to say because every day is different. It depends if, um, if we have, um, meeting coming in for a spotting session or, or I would just be coordinating all the projects that's happening at the time. Um, we'll get um, a turnover um, of a film or a TV episode and then I'll make a cue sheet um, and then we'll start writing uh, suites um, and then start putting in the picture um, and just, yeah, just it's pretty different every day and depends on um, what stage we're in um, for the specific project as well. So sometimes I would be, um, I might need to book an orchestra um, locally or in Vienna or, or anywhere else and um, make sure we have the right lineup and then send that stuff to or an orchestrator, um, get the music back and book a mixer and mix it. Um, so it's pretty much the entire, um, yeah, post production, uh, music post production. Um, process that I am trying to oversee. Right, and uh, you know sometimes projects overlap, so that must be get that must get so <laughs> hectic. And how uh, do you have uh, like a, a process that you've built out over the years that kind of works for you that keeps everything organized in your mind? Like how do you juggle? I mean, these are sometimes two hundred million dollar movies, you know. And so how do you how are you juggling? I'm sure it comes with so many different things that are being thrown at you at any given time practice just just practice and re remember what are the steps um you always do for every single project even though they're different um right. basically have to just tick every box and remind yourself oh i need to do this and do that um and yeah just to make sure that the client's happy so when so i guess yeah let's, let's maybe walk through like the whole the whole scoring process so when when lauren gets a gig and maybe he, he, he's off writing or working, you know, on, on what are you doing while during his writing process versus maybe what are you doing during the recording process and then all the way up to like the final cue delivery? So normally when we get a, uh, a film or an episode, we'll spot with the director um, and see what they like about the temp or what they don't like. And then we'll start going through everything and figure out what are the themes that we need. Um, and then Lauren would start writing these themes and then we'll go back and forth with the client and, and, and see if they like it. If not, one of the notes. Um, so for me, I, I, yeah, I make sure the notes are addressed and we have, um, yeah, we have a theme for every important characters um, in, in the film. And then from that, we'll start putting these suites um, in the picture um, according to what's happening on scene or um, yeah, according to the storyline as well. Um, and then, yeah, and then the, the, the team would come in um, for uh, review meetings as well. So most of the time, Lauren likes to work in front of the team because it's, it's good communication and we, we can read the room and see what they like. Um, so we do that at, um, at remote a lot. Um, and then from there, we'll go to, we start the um, recording process. We'll send MIDI to orchestrator and then have that sound at this um, stage um, for musicians to record. Um, we do a lot of remote um, session with, um, yeah, with overseas like um, Bratislava or Vienna or London. Um, and then from there, we got the music back. Um, and then most of the time we'll have a mixer mix at remote. So we can go listen to the mix and, um, and also have it send it to Lauren for approval. Um, and then go to the final mix for, uh, for dub. And then that's kind of the end of the, of the delivery process. And then after that, um, I'll be in charge of putting together an album for the film um, for release uh, closer to the film or, or, or yeah, TV um, release date. So yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of the whole process. Wow. <laughs> so I know, you know, Lauren's filmography, you know, it's extremely varied. So, I mean, he does these kind of intimate documentaries, character-based, you know, TV series and dramas. And, and then every now and then it's a giant video game or $200 million blockbuster. Does the size of the project and the budget affect your job and your process? Does it get more hectic the bigger the movie? Yes, definitely. Because um, 
the bigger the movie it's sometimes more complicated because you need there's more levels of approval uh, yeah. from studios or, or or even even for um yeah for for revisions internal revisions we we need to yeah we we do a lot of that as well and um and we also start um because we start the process usually quite early with the um reproduction so um just like in the for the yeah throughout the the production timeline it it, it doesn't really matter for um the scale of the project but for detail wise um bigger blockbuster does it, it, yeah it, it's just a bit more complicated yeah i'm sure <laughs> the more cooks in, more there's more cooks in the kitchen on the upper levels than it gets <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, now through through the years that I've gotten to know composers and and I've you know got to meet their teams, uh, you know, we've gotten to cross paths at events and functions. And I know you work alongside people like Max and Stefan and others. And it seems like it turns into kind of a big family after you've been working together for so long. Does it feel like that after these uh, these many years? Does it feel more like a like a well oiled family machine? <laughs> yeah, it does. We we really get along with each other, and because we were in in studio a lot of the times, and we just um, yeah, we become friends and we would hang out even though we're, um, we see each other like all the time, but like once in a while we would still like want to see each other outside of the studio. Um, right. yeah, it's, it's, it's a very tight team. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, yeah. they're so right. talented. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are, you guys are a great group. I love you. I love you guys. And, um, so kind of looking, let's rewind back to when you started versus, now, like going back, when, when you first started, were you nervous? Were you scared? Were you like worried about making mistakes? And how did you kind of get over that and I guess build confidence within yourself? Yes, I was very scared, and <laughs> um, and especially, especially it's it's Fitz Lauren. It's such a, it's such a big composer, and I and I heard of his, his name for for a while, and I really admire his work. Um, and so coming in, into the team, uh, feeling very fresh is. is quite scary and and because the team is also it's, it's very um they know they know each other um very well already so mm -hmm. coming in fresh was um very yeah very scary but then again um i i just kind of learned on the job um and I, even though i'm home I, I would try to like catch up and not to um forget like anything i'm always overthinking what else can i do next um right. i think i yeah, I'm also trying to be very detail-minded and organized. And um, I think for me, the most important thing is to think ahead what um, Lauren or the team would be expecting um, so I can plan ahead. Yeah, and I mean, not just different varying projects really will throw kind of, uh, you have to adapt to those. But I mean, of course, the world is in a completely different place than it was a few months ago. So now you're probably figuring out moving forward you know what the new normals are for you what you what your workflow looks like and of course what lauren's workflow looks like so talk about being at home now i mean i'm working from home too and uh i'm, I'm very grateful to be working in animation that we can keep working and you can hopefully uh, have you guys done remote sessions uh post covid yet or is it still are you still figuring out like a, a game plan yeah so we actually did uh did one session um remotely for a commercial and we did that in london with Basically, different uh, musicians record at home, um, mm -hmm. and then we would have a mixer here in LA, and then um, we would gather all the mat recording material, and then he would mix it. It's, it's an extra layer of gathering material, I guess, and also make sure uh, sonically the musicians are delivering the same sound. Um, so that's that's one thing that that we need to we need to think about instead of having everyone in the room because it's a, it's much more easier to to control. Um, right. But yeah, we so far we only have yeah one yeah that one project that that we that was a, a small lineup that was about twenty musicians separate yeah musicians to record at home and I there will be definitely more session coming in the coming months. I, yeah, assuming we won't be out anytime soon yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's glad that I'm glad that things. It's just it's just because I'm seeing a lot of stories from other composers and other uh, team members and just how everyone's adapting. It's just it's also inspiring too. I mean, it's it's no one expected this, and we're all 
kind of grasping and trying to figure things out. So it's, 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 I think it's really kind of making us uh, dig deep for our creative juices, trying to move forward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we definitely still want to use live musicians because it, it's like, it really make it sound so much better. And, and all these musicians, you know, all these musicians who are the heart of our, of, of our films and what we love, you know, they, they need, <laughs> we want to, we want to keep them a part of the process. Yeah. That's great. Um, so over the years, would you say that uh, Lauren has become more of a mentor than just a boss? Yes. Yeah. 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 He. Yeah. He would give me um, advice, and, and it's just it's it's constantly a learning process um, for me as well. Like over the there, there's not a I would say there's not a week that I'm not learning something new, um, right. which yeah, which is amazing, and I and I love what I what I do. So yeah, I'm really thankful to be on this team. Yeah, of course. What would you say are some of the big things you've learned, whether it's from Lauren or just being on the job, like over the past few years, there's something that you would have never learned in school or never learned doing something else that just learning by doing kind of type things. Um, yeah, just basically learn, learn when, when stuff come in, basically. Most of the time I have to like figure out um, myself because yeah, it's, it's always best for me to figure out before asking someone and I learned better that way um, as well um, and I think definitely on um, on the technical side I I learned a lot from from, from the guys here at the yeah. studio yeah if for someone who's entering who wants to do maybe what you do or wants to follow in your footsteps would you recommend certain programs or certain skills that they should really polish up on that to kind of like familiar familiarize themselves with no um, yeah logic or Cubase really well and and for but um, music editing, you need to know Pro Tools, and these are like the basic um, software that that you use. But I would say be very open, learning what other people are like, what what's new in in terms of um, what other people are using at the time, because there's always something new that come up. And then um, and I think from for us, for our team, it's always useful to just to try everything and to. Oh, and of course, you need a you need a uh, a studio. Like for example, for our team, we were constantly like, like buying sample libraries and try different sounds, and it's just um, it makes you um, yeah, it it makes you have an advantage if you you're constantly learning and just adding new sounds um on your work. So kind of looking forward, even you know you you you've, you're you're doing this work for for a few years. What are your kind of aspirations? Are you looking uh, for yourself, you know, in your career in the future? Do you hope to write music and do solo projects in the future? Do you want to keep doing kind of studio engineering and kind of coordination? I mean, what's kind of, uh, I guess, your your hopes and dreams? Pretty much kind of doing the same range, but it's be more like creative, um, creative manager and just to, um, pretty much managing more projects in a bigger team um, yeah. and. And and I also um, play at sessions as well. So that's also something that I love um, doing. Is I, I I played in some of Lauren's score uh, scores because um, I, I play piano. So that's that's also something I want to get into a bit more um, in the future, just to be yeah more creative on that side as well. Well, uh, well, Queenie, I want to thank you so much uh, for chatting today. It's been uh, enlightening to kind of hear kind of behind the scenes. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize how much, you know, it takes a village to, to put these things together. And, and uh, I've enjoyed seeing your work and you were you know, learning how, what you do and, and seeing how you work with Lauren and, and all the other people. So it's, it's always been a blast to, when we cross paths. And I'm really great to catch up with you. Thank you for chatting. This was fun. Yeah.